My wife and I have four children that have not yet been explained where babies come from, okay? They will shortly, but now we have to sit at our table and explain to them that the Supreme Court of the United States has in a great act of treachery against God and man, has said that two men coming together or two women coming together is on par with what their mommy and their daddy have, a marriage. This is sick. It's perverted. It's abominable. And I predict that there are going to be repercussions from random dads and moms somewhere along the way. Just mark my words. Mark my words. When kids come to school saying, well, my daddy said that this is a sin. And then some authorities get involved at some level, school authorities or maybe child abuse authorities who are saying that these children are being raised with hatred, with bigotry. These children are being brainwashed into thinking evil thoughts against their neighbor. And then what? They have re-education classes for the parents, sensitivity classes for the children, where they force the children to look at pictures and to say, these two men love each other. They can have a marriage. These two women love each other. And look at the little girl that they have. Isn't this a beautiful family? Don't you think that they should be able to have a beautiful family just like you and your mommy and your daddy have? There can be insidious crimes against God and against men that have a smooth voice that have articulate speech, that involve people who are wearing nice clothing, or that can involve people that are dressed in black robes and who make a lot of money and who have security details and who arrive in chauffeured cars to the Supreme Court. Mark my words. This will, this will not go away. I would like to first apologize and then talk about states leaving the union. I apologize. I ask God's forgiveness. I ask your forgiveness. In the mid-90s, I was a much higher profile Christian leader than I am now. Had a lot of people following me. Tens of thousands of people in the late 80s and early 90s getting arrested. And I began to address with certain Christian leaders at that time, and I dropped the ball, and this is why I'm asking God's forgiveness. I began to address with people that we should have a line that we draw now. This is in the early 90s, okay? That we should have a line that we draw now that says, if the government of the United States ever tries to force us to have homosexual marriage, that we will fight a shooting war. That we will, that we will, we we declare now to lay it out in words, in broad daylight, that we will consider this an act of treason and treachery against the laws of men and the laws of God, and that it will provoke, it will instigate a civil war. I didn't follow through. I didn't follow through. And I wish I would have. I wish I would have. When the Supreme Court of the United States gave the Dred Scott decision in 1858, it it guaranteed that civil war was inevitable. It guaranteed. When they said that slaves are chattel property according to the Constitution, it guaranteed that civil war and bloodshed were were inevitable. Okay? Slavery actually was in the Constitution. Okay? Same gender matrimony. This abominable, horrifying, treacherous sin, this crime against God and man, it's not in the Constitution. This is an act of tyranny. This is not even an act of raw judicial power like they used to say about Roe versus Wade because they don't have the power to do it. It's an act of treachery and tyranny. And do our elected officials and do at the state level and at the federal level, do they have the courage to do the right thing and to resist these judges, to say no. Whether you want to call it civil disobedience at the state level or federal um, elected officials beginning the impeachment proceedings, 
That is what it will take. 10 years ago, I believe it was, when they released their first ruling, I paid to have a full page ad put in the Washington Times calling on Congress to impeach the judges, saying, are you men or are you cowards? Impeach them because this is not the rule of law. Scalia said it. It's a threat to democracy. Robert said it. This has nothing to do with the Constitution. Friends, this is a criminal act of treason. Will our elected officials resist? Or are they going to let this continue to devolve? And are we going to see something like we saw in the 1860s, civil war? Why does a nice guy like me keep getting thrown in jail? I have been arrested almost 50 times and spent over a year of my life locked up in various prison facilities. And I wrote a book, many books. In fact, one of them is called, Why Does a Nice Guy Like Me Keep Getting Thrown in Jail? It's a theological work, answering those who say that the church should not be involved in politics or that we should retreat. I encourage you to get it. In fact, get one and give it to your pastor.